In the headlines, Inspector General of Police deploys new commissioners to Abuja and 12 other states. Chief of Army Staff orders Army to take battle to bandits' enclaves. On the foreign scene, UN pleads support for Nigeria to avert food crisis in Northeast. And in sports, Lionel Messi sets to join Paris Saint-Germain in two-year deal after leaving Barcelona. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Dashan Hosseina Usman. For latest updates, connect with us on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Now the news in full. Inspector General of Police, Usman al Baba has ordered the posting of commissioners of police to take over the saddle of leadership in 13 state commands, including the Federal Capital Territory. In a statement by Force Public Relations Officer Frank Mba, the posting of senior officers is part of efforts at repositioning the force for greater efficiency, stabilizing internal security order, and scaling up the fight against crimes and criminality in the country. The IGP, while charging officers to justify confidence reposed in them, has assured citizens of sustained efforts by the force in stabilizing security in the country. The posting and the redeployment of senior police officers is with immediate effect, the statement revealed. Nigerian Army has assured citizens of its total commitment to tackling banditry, saying its operations in the country have been reinvigorated and strengthened. Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, who is on a two-day operational tour of all military formations and units under the 8th Division of the Nigerian Army, said this at the 171 Battalion of the Nigerian Army in Daura, Katsina. He said the tour is expected to ensure that troops take the battle to the enclaves of bandits with a view of destroying them. Lieutenant General Yahaya explained that the essence of the tour is also to access readiness and operations of troops on ground and appreciate their conduct and challenges to encourage them to do more. Minister of Defense, retired Major General Bashir Magashi, says federal government is committed to ensuring the armed forces of Nigeria is adequately equipped and motivated to achieve this statutory mandate. Magashi gave the assurance at the inauguration of National Defense College, first directing staff headquarters at the college's permanent site in Piwoi, Abuja. Also speaking, Commandant National Defense College, Rear Admiral Oladele Daji, said the new edifice would help to ameliorate challenges of accommodation being faced by the college over the years. As Minister of Defense, I shall continue to encourage the galvanized effort towards ensuring the armed forces is sufficiently equipped, well-trained and adequately motivated to achieve their statutory mandate. The Ministry of Defense, under my leadership, will continue to support the National Defense College at all times in sustaining the achievements of the Center of Excellence and attain further enviable heights among other defense colleges globally. I also reiterate my support in fast tracking the completion of the ongoing projects in the college to ensure its relocation to the permanent site here within the shortest possible time. The timely completion of this building is just another demonstration of the federal government resolve to improve the welfare of the armed forces and the civilian staff of the Ministry of Defense, despite several daunting challenges. The relocation of the college to the permanent site will ensure that both the faculty and administrative staff operate from a common place, thereby ensuring that college activities are well harmonized. Currently, most of the college staff reside in different locations like Guarim Park, Apu, Meitama, and Ushafa. Recently, there has been pressure from the FCT administration for the college to relocate its staff residing at Apu following the sales of the Apu quarters. 
Over 5,000 schools in Kaduna State will remain shut following ongoing military operations to flush out bandits from the state. This is based on a directive by state government announcing the suspension of resumption of both public and private schools across the state, signed by the Commissioner for Education, Dr. Shehu Muhammad, and that of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan. Resumption of schools was scheduled for August 9, but the state's government said this is being halted while awaiting further assessments by security agencies. Considering the development, state governments appeal to people of the state to show understanding and report any threats to security agencies. Pastors of EY and Church have called for the sacking and prosecution of Brno Geographic Information System Executive Secretary Engineer Adam Bababe over the demolition of its church in Meduguri. In a press briefing with newsmen at the site of the demolition, the pastors headed by Reverend Shaulu Ndahi also asked state government to reconstruct the destroyed building and its water factory. They also demanded justice and compensation of families of those injured and killed during the clash between members of the civilian JTF and its members in Moduganari. I mean, being done by baristas, collective baristas, that we legally acquire this. This is a sale agreement. Therefore, we want to assure everybody that this land we secure it legally this is our opinion opinion number one we went to government of Bono state his excellency governor umara zulum to come to our aid to rebuild back our church with immediate effect yes, sir. Yes, sir. we want him to come I rebuild our water factory with immediate effect, yes. with all the machineries, with all the implements, and everything that the Bonai or the Borges has destroyed. Number three, the house of our security man, a man that is of age, he is above 60 of age, his property was Ramshakal, no even single utensil that he brought out of the house. Everything we have been destroyed. We need government to come immediately at his aid. You're still watching Trust TV News update. Coming up after the break. Nigeria's coronavirus active cases surpass 9,000. Do stay. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakub Isa. And I'm Nakabi the Jeji. And you know Mufa. Stephen Amon. I want to have a say, Mute, then some of them. I'm going to come to the house. Looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress. back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust TV News Updates. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. You heard that Inspector General of Police Usman Al-Alibaba has ordered the posting of commissioners of police to take over the saddle of leadership in the 13 state commands including the FCT. 
and over 5,000 schools in Kaduna State will remain shut following ongoing military operations to flush out bandits from the state. Now to more news. Keno State Government has reduced payment of land use charges by 30% in ease to ease payment of property owners across the state. Permanent Secretary, Kano State Bureau for Land Management, Dr. Zainab Ibrahim Braji, disclosed this in a statement on Friday in Kano. The statement by Murtala Shehu Umar, Information Officer to the Bureau, disclosed that Ibrahim Braji said this when she received executives of the Nigerian Bar Association, Kano Branch. The NBA chairman, Kano Branch, Amin Usaini Gadenya, said they were at the Bureau to dialogue with management on issues concerning land administrations. She said Governor Abdullahi Ganduje approved the discount in order to encourage property owners to willingly pay up their charges appropriately. Following the discovery of Abuja by the Aguda panel in 1976, successive administrations have had run-in battles with the original inhabitants of Abuja on land seizures and compensation. Trust TV's correspondent Chijoke Okafo in this report seeks to answer six answers to the questions of justice and fairness for the indigenous people of Abuja. One thousand seven hundred and sixty nine square kilometers of land, nine indigenous tribes and three point four million people. The endless tussle between the original inhabitants of the federal capital territory and successive federal governments has raged on for many decades. Issues of land grabbing, land swapping and land racketeering have been at the core of this saga. Now, if the Constitution says that the Federal Capital Territory should be treated as if it is a state, and we all know that states have governors, the big question is, who governs the Federal Capital Territory? Pape Community is one of Abuja's largest slum settlements, and it is densely populated with contradictions about its exact population. It lies on the foothills of the famous Papi rocks that are easily sighted from the neighboring Maitama district and is approximately a 10 minute drive away from the city center. But there is a vast contrast between life in the heart of Abuja and this expansive shanty town of shacks with corrugated iron roofs and slums stuck into the horizon. With the recent eviction notice issued to residents of this small community by the FCT administration, their once normal lives are about to be hampered. This is just one out of the many cases of evictions and demolitions that have been eminent in the FCT for decades. We meet up with Pastor Nlaidi Jeji, National President, Abuja Original Inhabitants Development Association to fully understand the crux of the matter and why the indigents have always felt marginalized for years. He explains. This very terrible question you are asking has bedeviled the whole Nigerians, the legal system, the constitution, and the Nigerian political leaders, and those who are human in heart and who love humanity and right of people. Let me explain. The whole courts in Nigeria and ECOWAS court have ruled in the favor of the fact that FCT people in Nigeria to be justice and to operate because you cannot rule and govern people unjustly. The laws and the courts have ruled that FCT by law is a state. All the paraphernalia of a state exists in this FCT. Therefore, Nigeria is having 37 states, not 36 states. Number two, the Constitution itself, Section 299, says the Federal Capital Territory will be treated as if it's a state. Now, which constitution in the whole world will treat the, where the capital of that place is that it will be treated as a state and not a state? The Oster Clause, if 
which evil did original inhabitant people create that Nigerian government constitution will now say that the people that are more than three million that they will be treated as if it's a state and that you have only one senator, two house of red, they are the government that is looking close to them is not local government, yeah. it is area council. Samuel Chuku is a legal practitioner and he gives us an insight into what the law says about ownership of federal lands. He calls for amendment of the laws guiding the FCT, stating that unless these measures are taken, it will continue to be an endless circle of aberration. As per legislation, the FCC does not have its own legislative assembly. It is actually the National Assembly that legislates for the FCT. That in itself is an aberration, which should be corrected. But like we would say, it is what it is at the moment. So there is a problem. But that problem can only be cured by legislation. If you were to ask for my opinion as a legal practitioner, I believe that it is possible in major cities in the world, like New York, you have New York State, but you also have New York City. New York City has its mayor. Washington, D.C. is not a state per se, but it is not treated as a state because the laws recognize it. Such an arrangement can be made in the country, but until the laws have been amended, the lacuna would exist. But how long will the indigents continue to speak, and for how long will the government play deaf ears to the plight of its people? Shijo Okafo, Trust TV News, Abuja. Similarly, Abuja, Nigeria's capital, is one of the fastest growing cities in the world with beautiful landscape and scenery. However, reckless refuse dumping is a recurring menace in the capital city. Some Nigerians have taken up the challenge to turn the tides and make good use of solid ways to create employment opportunities for themselves. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu tells us more. Disposal of solid waste, if not properly managed, can be a widespread problem in both urban and rural areas. The Federal Capital Territory is not exempted as solid waste disposal poses a threat in some parts of the city. Some like solid waste often block drainage systems and waterways, which has the potentials of flood risks with the annual increase in waste generation and heavy reliance on landfilling as disposal, it is just a matter of time before significant problems of space limitations, health and environmental issues hit the nation's capital severely. The scrap men in Pape district Abuja, popularly known as Mebola, are changing the narrative with the initiative of gathering solid waste and distributing them for recycling. Register Pape Scrap Men Association, Mohammed Harris Abdullahi, explains how solid waste gathering is a source of livelihood for young people and the economic benefits associated with it. Especially for young people like us, this profession has helped us to be independent and even extend a helping hand to others. We are all young people. Before you find one old person in this profession, you will have counted 20 to 200 young men. We are all dependent on this, and we take care of our families with it. According to the experiences of these scrap men, the vice chairman of the association, Abdul Wahab Usman Lali, says some people see them as nuisance to the society. What disturbs me the most about what we do here is the fact that the community members think of us as nuisance to the society. Most of the people living here have approached us to talk to us due to how we operate and how we discipline our boys when they have done wrong. We do not tolerate having criminals around here. Lali noted that disciplinary actions are taken against some of the workers who go astray. I want to draw the attention of the general public that a scrap man is not a thief. It's a clean profession that has fed us and our families for years. When one of our boys is caught stealing, we punish them here first, then hand them over to the authorities, who then take actions from them. Combined efforts in maintaining a proper solid waste management remains an integral method of sustaining the environment. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Nigeria Labour Congress wants domestic gas supply for electricity generation to be below $1.50 
per standard cubic feet. In an exclusive interview with Trust TV, the NLC also demanded that gas supply to electricity generation companies should be made payable in Naira as against the dollar for domestic operations. Nigeria holds the largest natural gas reserves in Africa and the ninth largest globally with an estimate of 200.79 trillion cubic feet. But domestic gas supply for electricity generation has been a nightmare for generating companies. With a total generating capacity of 13,000 megawatts, the country currently produces less than 6,000 megawatts owing to limitations from low gas supply to power plants. Despite government's reduction of domestic gas prices for electricity generation to $2.18 per standard cubic feet from $2.50, the Nigerian Labour Congress says the reduction falls far below expectation. The government of Nigeria committed to the reduction of the gas, natural gas as feed stock for the generation stations, our uh, generation companies, committed to it as an agreement to that effect. From $2.50 to less than $1.50. The NLC insists on the reduction of electricity tariffs to 15 Naira per kilowatt hour by December 2021 as contained in an agreement with the government. If you reduce the price of gas to a generation company, you reduce the price of gas, the price of electricity will crash. I have just told you they are paying $2.50 for standard cubic feet, whereas other gas users are paying $1.50 or $1.70 or even less. Just crash it, just come back to what you are selling to other people, to the Jenkos, the price, the tariff will crash. Of the 28 electricity generation companies, only three are hydro, while others are gas-fired plants, making gas supply a major determinant in electricity generation for Nigerians. The Nigerian Labour Congress believes the price of domestic gas will significantly impact on electricity tariff. Nigeria Center for Disease Control says the number of active COVID-19 cases has increased to 9,066, with 565 additional cases confirmed on Friday. The NCDC made this known via its verified website on Saturday morning. It is reported that the country's new active cases indicates an increase from 9,036 cases registered a day earlier. NCDC stated that 76 people have recovered and were discharged from various isolation centers in the country. The public health agency said that till date, 165,409 recoveries had been recorded nationwide in 36 states and the federal capital territory. Senate has queried the Bureau of Public Enterprises over a series of financial infractions amounting to 8.7 billion naira. The committee, in its report presented by the chairman, Senator Matthew Urogide, PDP Edo, accused BPE of non-remittance of 4.7 billion naira dividends received on federal government holdings. Bureau of Public Enterprise, in another query adopted by the Senate, was alleged of diversion of 2.5 billion naira PHCN proceeds from access and FCMB banks to now liquidated ASO savings and loans as a condition precedent to the staff cooperative mortgage, contrary to financial regulation 3205. The Senate asked the agency to refund the sum to the government's purse and submit evidence of remittance to Auditor General of the Federation and Senate Public Accounts Committee. And now to the foreign scene. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says Nigeria's humanitarian response plan, which seeks over $1 billion, is only one-third funded, calling for support to avert food crisis in the Northeast. Farhan Haq, Deputy Spokesman for UN Secretary General, said this while briefing correspondents at UN headquarters in New York on Friday on the humanitarian situation in northeast Nigeria. He said sustained funding would be needed to avert food crisis in the zone. 
According to him, an estimated 4.4 million people, including internally displaced people, are expected to face critical food shortages, with 775,000 people being at extreme risk of catastrophic food insecurity. And in sports, Argentinian football great Lionel Messi is to give a parting press conference on Sunday as he leaves Catalan club Barcelona after 21 extraordinarily successful years. French media reports that Messi has informed PSG of his desire to join the Paris club and that discussions are ongoing over a two-year deal with the option of a third season. Messi's career will continue in League One alongside his close friend Neymar and fellow countryman Mauricio Pochettino with negotiations between the two parties. And that brings us to the end of Trust TV News Update. For more updates, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Dashen Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.